uh, 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 do so because it is fertile ground, okay? Hey, look, this is CJ here at The Sound, and you are about to hear a testimony that is really going to bless you. Hey, I love you. We see you soon. Peace. Hello, everyone. Hey, this is CJ here at The Sound. I'm back here in Southern California, and like I promised, I posted on my Facebook page the other night about a testimony that I wanted to give, that I'm about to give right now, about what God did, not only for me, but through me. And you know, the Bible says it very clear that we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. You see, the devil don't want you to have a testimony. And what took place when I landed at LAX on this particular night, it was a night flight. I get to LA around 11, 11, 15 p.m. And uh, what, what, what the enemy tried to do uh, 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 against me, uh, God raises a standard against that. And we know that's what the word says. Well, the standard that he raised against the, in it, uh, the enemy on this night is, is just overwhelming. And, and I'm still, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's even hard for me to explain what happened. So I just want to give this quick testimony because I know that it's going to bless you. I know that it's going to take you uh, uh, from a place of, of uh, complacency and it's going to build your level of faith to where you can truly stand on that which God has gifted you with, has called you to and elected you to. So because it's very important in these days and these end times that we step into that which God has called and elected us to do. That's why Peter wrote it in, 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 in 2 Peter. Uh, uh, 2 Peter uh, chapter 1 and, and I believe it's uh, uh, verse 10 when he says so make sh your election or make your call and election sure so that you won't stumble because see if we don't know what we are here to do then we will go about our lives aimlessly and carelessly and that's not how God wants us to live our life we all have a very unique and very strategic and powerful purpose on this earth for God his son his spirit and his kingdom and so that's why it's so important for us to step into that and so uh you know what happened here uh, i guess i should I, i'm just gonna dive right into it because i don't want to make it long but it just really really blessed me now i was flying back to california i'm out here for a week doing some work for hod house of destiny and uh you know i travel with my bass guitar and so what I'm going to do in this testimony, I'm going, to, I'm going to give you the end of what happened first. And then I'm going to tell you what happened before. Because, see, that's what the future is like. See, this is how Kim Clement used to preach about the, the, uh, the future. He said, you're somewhere in the future and you look much better than you look right now. So of uh, the future, you can, take, you can bring that future into your now. And if you bring that future into your now, that means you will get to that future victoriously. And no matter what the enemy has planned for you, God is going to make sure that you're going to get there because you have already been there. God has already shown you. You've already said okay to it. You've already accepted it and you have brought it back. You have become one with that which God has predestined for you to do. That's why that saying, that rap, that proclamation is so powerful and so true. We are somewhere in God's future that he has designated for each and every one of us. And we look better then than we do right now. So God says, so take that better, take that which is great, take that which is better, which is your victory in me and bring it to your now so that you will have an assurance that you will get to that place called your future. That is what happened. Now, like I said, I'm going to start with what took place. You guys know that I'm a bass player and my instruments, I love my instrument. I actually boarded a bus at LAX at around 11.45 p.m. The airport is crowded. People are going everywhere. I'm outside at the bus depot or the curbside where the buses will come and pick you up to take you to the rental car facility, whichever facility or whichever company that you're using. We use Avis. So I had my base, I had my luggage, I had my computer bag. And I got on that bus and I left my base right there. That's where I'm going to. That's, that's why I want to start with that. So now I'm going to go back. 
I'm going to go back. Remember what? Remember how we used to say, I want to go to the future and bring it back. So I'm going to bring this back. I'm going to bring this back to what happened. I was on the flight. When I was on the flight before I landed at LAX on this particular night, it was an hour and a half before I touched down. I had just awakened out of a sleep. You know, I, I had kind of fallen asleep. And, and so I was, uh, you know, playing a game or watching something on my phone. And uh, all of a sudden, this overwhelming sensation of fear came over me. It was so powerful. It's hard for me to even explain it because I was, in it. I was explaining this to our administrator, uh, Debbie Oren, who gave me a very powerful interpretation of this word. And she also said, Charlie, we must continue to pray for insight and foresight because God really showed you something. So I, I, I was trying to explain to her, just like I'm trying to explain to you guys right now, that this thing that came upon me, it was like it had happened. It, I, 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 I had this fear. My adrenaline level peaked. My pulse, my heart was pounding in my chest. I began to sweat. And the thought that came to me that got me to this condition is, I don't have my bass guitar. Where's my bass? That's exactly what I said on the flight an hour and a half before I arrived at LAX. And then I stopped myself and I said, Charlie, why are you tripping? You know, lost your mind. Your bass is right above your head. You know, in, in, you know, in the bins uh, uh, above your head. And so, you know, and I calmed down. And I was like scratching my head. I said, what is wrong with me? Why would I think something like that and put my body through that? You know, when, you're, when you have adrenaline rush, you know, my wife is a nurse. She said, Charlie, that's not good for you because out of that, that fluid that rushes through, you know, rushes through your body like that, that's really not good for your body. Well, that is exactly what happened on that flight. I freaked. I freaked out. It was so real. So let's fast forward. I land in LAX an hour and a half later. I get off the off the plane, and I was supposed to be uh, uh, a ride was supposed to be provided for me. Actually, Sidney Rash, who is our drummer now, that drums down at House of Destiny, he had arrived there earlier, and he was going to wait on me. But what happened is that his flight arrived uh, earlier than what he expected, and then my flight was delayed. So he had called Debbie or an hour our administrator, and said, uh, look, Charlie's going to be three hours before he land. Uh, can we get him a car so that, you know, I don't have to wait three hours? Now, she said, oh, yeah, of course. So when I land, my phone was able to pick up service again. I get a text from Debbie. We have a rental car set aside for you at Avis because, you know, the city is it's too late. So so just, just go get a car. I said, oh, no, you know, that's cool. So that's what I did. I grabbed my computer bag, bag grabbed my bass out of the overhead bin, and I got it on my shoulder, and I walk out. And it's a happy-go-lucky Charlie back in L.A. I go down to the baggage claim. My bag comes down, and I go out to the curbside, and now I'm waiting for the bus to come. Now, the bus wasn't that late. Now, it was a couple decided to pull out a couple of uh, cigarettes, and I, you know, I, I just, I, I can't stand cigarette smoke. So I moved over, I grabbed all of my stuff, and I moved over, and I placed my base against this pole, and I was just waiting for the bus to come. Well, sure enough, the place is popping off, man. There's people everywhere. You know LAX. If you ever flown in LAX, it's crazy. It's absolutely nuts. And so the bus come, and I get on the bus, and we, we leave. Now, I get to Avis. I go up to the counter. I'm an Avis preferred member, so I can go straight up to the counter. I don't have to go to the regular Avis spot uh, counter. I go to that preferred counter and and uh, because I'm, I'm one of their uh, frequent renters. And so I go there, and um, and but it's still a slow night, so it's taking a guy a little while to find my real, you know, reservation because we just had made it and, and, and blah, blah, blah. So I'm sitting there, and then Rap and he said, okay, yeah, I see your reservations. I got a car for you. What kind of car do you need? I said, I don't care, man. I'm, j I'm just going to have it for 24 hours because I'm going to turn it in because I have my vehicle that I still have out here. And, uh, and so he hands me the ticket. And as he's handing me my ticket where the, uh, with the information of where my vehicle would be, I said, wait a minute, where's my base? And I turned around, and there I have my two bags but no base. And I began to freak out. I said, oh, my God, where's my base? 
and, 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 and believe me, guys, I begin to freak out. But what's very interesting about this is that on the plane, my heart was pounding in my chest. On the plane, my adrenaline level peaked. But at Avis, I was just upset with myself. How could I do something so, so mundanely stupid? How can I be so crazy to leave a $6,000 instrument at the airport? And so the guy behind the counter, he noticed that I began to get upset and I, 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 and I was verbally uh, uh, speaking out about how upset I was. And he said, really, man? I said, yeah, you know, I was just, I was just losing it, guys. I was losing it. And this is what happened. The guy behind the counter, he looked at me, he said, look, sir, calm down. Let me tell you something. There's still good people in the world. There are good people in the world. And you know what? I think that when you go back out there, you're going to find your base. And I, I looked at him and I said, L.A.? L.A.X.? Have you lost your mind? I said, okay, if that's what you think, you know, but that's, that was my mindset. That was my mindset. And so he, he laughed and, and, uh, and I, you know, I couldn't laugh, but I was like, I shook my head. And he said, really? And I said, okay, man, well, uh, all right, man, I got to go. And then he said, and, uh, look, don't take the car. We're 24 hours. We're 24 hours. We're going to be here. Your car's going to be here. It's in space number uh, P33. It's going to be here. He said, why don't you get back on the bus? Oh, and then he asked me before he said all this. I left this out. He asked me before he said all this, well, did you leave it on, on the bus? And I said, no, because now I can recollect I did not get on the bus with that base. Now, I knew that, but I just didn't know where I had left it. But I knew that I didn't, uh, you know, get on the bus with it. And so, and so uh, uh, I was getting ready to go get in the car. He said, why don't you just, just, just leave the car here? Because, see, we're 24 hours. Catch another bus. Go back over to the terminal. Because if you drive your car, now you have to. You know, you're going to have to park, and then, and then you're going to have to get out. You're going to have to, you know, do all that and then pay for parking. You don't want to have to do all that. Just ride one of our buses back over to the terminal that uh, we pick you up at. Which terminal was that? And I said, it was Terminal 5. He said, okay, well, just ride back there, and then you can get out, and you can go to Ross and Fail. You know, I feel very good about this, sir. I think uh, 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 you're going to find your base because there are good people in the world. Now, that's what he was saying. He was calm. He was collective. Now, I don't want you to forget that. I don't want you to forget this, too. On the plane, when I first went to this future, when I first went there, when I was first freaking out and my heart was palpitating in my chest, my pulse in my neck, I felt like my, you know, this vein was about to explode. The adrenaline was pumping all through my body. I was sweating. I calmed myself down. But actually, it was the Holy Spirit because instantly, it dissipated. Okay, so I get on the bus, and it's only three people on the bus, myself and a couple. And the bus driver dropped them off at the international terminal. And then we come around the terminal five, and she said, okay, here's your ter terminal. And as she was getting ready to stop in the same spot where they picked me up, there's my bass guitar leaning against a pole exactly where I had placed it. Now this is 30 minutes later at LAX. 30 minutes later. Now, we all know the protocol for uh, a baggage that, are, uh, that is not attended by a person. If you leave your bag unattended, that's a security threat. And you know that. Those of you that don't travel, let me tell you, it's a very serious thing at every airport around the world. You cannot leave your bag unattended. Nowhere on the grounds of the airport. Nowhere. My bag, my base, my $6,000 base guitar was there at this particular lo uh, location for at least 30 minutes. So I see the base I, and I said, okay, stop the bus, don't leave. She said, what do you mean don't leave? The reason why I'm here, I'm here to pick up that. And she looked, she said, that? She said, you left that? You know, she was looking at me like, how can you do something so stupid? I was like, yeah, right? I get off the bus. Now, my base is here about 25 to 30 feet to the right, I mean, to the left of my bass guitar, there's a policeman standing there. And he's standing like he's in attention. But this is what was so interesting about this particular cop. He was looking at my bass. He was, his eyes was focused on my bass guitar. He was leaning against there. People are coming and going. People were getting on the bus that I had just got off of. 
okay, that I just got off. I get off the bus. I noticed the cop, but, you know, I, I didn't pay any attention. I, yeah, I'm, I see my bass, and I'm thanking God because a $6,000 bass guitar is still there. And so I get, I, I grab this bass, I put it on my shoulder, and I start walking back toward the bus. And that cop looked at me, and he smiled, and he gave a slight salute. And I smiled back and I waved back at him and I got on the bus. And that's when I felt the presence of God all over me. I didn't understand what was happening or what happened at that moment. But then, all of a sudden, my spirit got quickened by the Spirit of God. My spirit was quickened by the Spirit of God. Then it, be then it, be uh, uh, it began to, uh, to become clearer to me. But I still... I, I was like, God, is this you? What's, what's going on here? What is this? So I had to talk to someone. I couldn't forget it. I called my wife. It was around 12.45 West Coast time. So that means it's 2.45 a.m. in Dallas. So, of course, I woke her up. Now, thank God I got a godly wife and a wife that really loves me because uh, if she didn't, if she wasn't godly, she would have hung up on me. And then when I, got, when, when I got back home, she made sure that I was sleeping outside. <laughs> Just kidding. But anyway, she, she listened. She said, what? And she was calm. She said, Charlie. Now, I called her before I went to go get my bass. I'm sorry. Let me back up a little bit. I called her before I went back to get my bass. And she was calm. She said, I think it's going to be okay. So I had to speak to someone after I picked the bass up. I go back to the Avis uh, uh, place. I get in my car and I'm driving. And now I'm, I'm, I'm in condemnation. And let me tell you the reason why I was in condemnation. Not condemnation of, of anything that was spiritual. I was mad at myself. I said, how can you be so silly, Charlie? How can you be so stupid? How is it that you can... And you can leave something like that, something that you've worked, worked hard for for all of these years, and, and, and God has blessed you with, and you can just leave that kind of, 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 of value just out in the street. But thank you, Lord, for protecting my base. That's what I was saying at the same time, but I was beating myself up. So I had to get clarity on this. Now, the beautiful thing about this is when I went to two people that I truly, truly trust because I wanted to get an understanding. Revelation had came, but I didn't have complete understanding of it. So I needed to talk to someone. The Bible is very clear when it says that there's safety in a multitude of counselors, but those counselors have to be people that you are in covenant with, that, 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 that you, you have a relationship that, is, that your deep calls out to their deep. And there's this covenant relationship that you are one. And so uh, uh, I went to two people that I truly, truly trust. If Kim Clement was alive, of course I would have went to him. But he's, he's no longer here. But God has given me several people that I trust that I can go to and counsel to find out exactly what it is. When I have revelation, but I don't have understanding. And this is what was happening with this that, uh, that happened to me. Revelation that came but I didn't have understanding. And so uh, both Debbie and Greg, what they said was spot on, but this is what Debbie added, which I know is the word of the Lord, not only for me, but every one of you, because the enemy has the desire to steal. We know what the Bible says is to steal, kill, and destroy. He wants to steal your gift. He wants to steal that which God has given unto you, which God values. It's a treasure to God. It is a very, uh, it's very, it's priceless to God, his gift that he's given to each and every one of us. It's priceless to him. And the enemy knows that if he could steal that, he feels like he has the upper hand. And so what Debbie said to me was, the reason why God took you to that future before it happened is because that's the plan of the enemy to do what, Charlie? It's not about just the bass guitar itself. That's a type and shadow. What the enemy wants to do is to steal your gift. And what God showed you was don't take your gift for granted. Don't take that which God has gifted you with and lay it down. Like the Bible says, don't cast your pearls before swine. Don't take your gift and say, uh, you know, 
blah, blah, blah. No, God treasures that which he has gifted us with. It's priceless to him. It's very, very valuable. And God wants, and he wanted me, he wants you to know, and he wanted me to know that it's valuable. Don't take that which God has gifted you with, Charlie, and just lay it down. Don't compromise. Don't let anyone tell you that the gift that God has gifted you with, that you can't flow in that gift. Don't let anyone tell you that you can't prophesy. Don't let anyone tell you that you are not a prophet. Don't let anyone tell you what uh, the opposite of what you know God is saying. And if you don't know what God is saying, seek his face. He says, God says it, the Father says, if you seek me diligently, I will reward you with the gifts of heaven. I will reward you with that which you need. Seek first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness and the things that he has allotted for you will be added unto you. It will be given unto you. You know what that means? That understanding and revelation of that which God has gifted you with will begin to uh, uh, become clear to you. And that's what God showed me. That cop, I don't care what anyone says, that was an angel. Because, see, what I've been hearing in my prayer time over and over and over and over again. Angels are watching over me. I, I, I've been singing it. And, 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 and I commissioned the team that is down at the uh, House of Destiny. And I said, we have to be very strategic in the songs that we pick. And one of the songs that I know that we should be singing, and we haven't done it yet. I'm talking about rebirthing the songs that Prophet Kim and I. And the team wrote. Because those songs weren't songs that were just praise and worship songs only. They were proclamations. They were a, a revelation. They came from the mouth of God. They came from the heart of God. And we need to be very strategic in rebirthing those songs. But we got to rebirth them in the spirit that it was birthed in. We have to bring it back or we have to sing it and deliver those songs in the spirit that those songs was birthed in. And God showed me, and he sent an angel to watch over the gift that God has gifted me with. I will not prostitute his gift. I will not lay it down and just give it away. I won't let anyone tell me what I can't do. I know what it is that I'm called to do, and I will prophesy. I will speak his word. Father, I will declare your word. I will stand on a mountain high or in a valley low. I don't care where it is that you want me to go. I will speak your word and deliver it the way you want me to. For you have gifted me with this. And I shall value it as much as you do. Pray that prayer. Receive that prayer. Don't let anyone steal your gift, and especially don't let the enemy steal that which God has gifted you with. Okay? This is CJ here at The Sound. It's time to just truly kick some devil, but I'm fired up, y'all. I'm fired up. Try to take my bass, try to take my sound, Try to 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 take that which God has gifted me and, and, and appointed me and commissioned me and given me the authority to walk in. No, no devil. I am well able to do everything that God has gifted me with, and I shall do it. I shall do it, and you shall too. Hey, this is CJ here at the Sound. I love you. We see you next time.